back here and all the women here call me my love and all the men here call me mommy or my queen but not in a creepy way in like the most endearing way possible <laughs> i realized when we got in that our air conditioner had stopped working so i had the maintenance guy come and he fully knows my name but he will only refer to me as my queen and i'm like you know what this is this is the love that i deserve anyways back in miami couldn't be happier to be back it's been it's been a minute. I feel like I've not been here in a very long time, but I have talked about this before. I love Miami just for the quality of life. Like, yes, there is this really amazing social scene, parties and food. You can go out every night of the week if you wanted to, but there's also this really amazing like health and wellness side. They have amazing, really healthy food options, amazing workout classes, the beach, the weather here is just incredible. And I feel like every time that I come here, it's just like a full, reset i also don't really have any friends here so when i'm here it's a lot of solitude and i just spend a lot of time reading and doing a lot of kind of self-care i guess and it's kind of it's a nice break from everything especially after last weekend i really wanted to get back into a routine where i'm going on my walks in the morning again and going back to the gym and eating well and taking my supplements every day so that is exactly what i'm going to do today i'm having my green juice and then i've been taking these ritual symbiotic plus probiotics but it's not just a probiotic it's also a prebiotic and a postbiotic so it's a three in one. It has two of the world's most clinically studied probiotic strains because quality is better than quantity. This is my go-to while traveling and being constantly on the move can really throw off our gut balance, which is why I always travel with it. And it's worked so well for me that I've been able to be really consistent with taking it, which has not been super easy for me, especially on days that I'm flying. I always make sure to take this and I've noticed significantly less bloating. And that's a question that I always get when I do AMAs and stuff is how to not deal with bloating because I'm constantly, constantly traveling. And this really has been the solution and also i think i talked about this the last time that i talked about these but it has like a minty smell and kind of leaves a minty taste in your mouth which some supplements the aftertaste of it i really cannot deal with and then i never want to take them but this one's very nice side note i'm also obsessed with their melatonin it tastes like vanilla and it has worked so 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 well for me so if you are on the hunt for new melatonin as well i highly recommend the one from ritual if you want to try any of these you can use my code riddle 24 20% off. So we are here for the Delray Tennis Tournament. It is a 250 tournament, which is the, the lowest level tennis tournament on the tour, but they're still fun. This one particularly, I don't know if I would describe Delray as a beach town. It's sort of got a beach town feel. There's one really long avenue that has a bunch of shops and really good restaurants. And I think it's a big vacation spot. So it's really, it's super cute. And the tournament is always absolutely packed. People love it. It's a lot of American players because there's not a ton of tournaments in the US. It's really nice when we have tournaments here because we have this place in Miami. So Delray is like an hour drive north. So usually we just stay here in our place in Miami and just drive back and forth. I've kind of just been laying low the last couple of days recovering from Vegas. I didn't feel great. So I haven't gone to any of Taylor's matches yet. He's already in the semifinals. I also had to go back to LA for like 24 hours just to shoot this campaign. And then I flew right to Miami the next morning. So it's been a very exhausting like last six days. Earlier this week, I did two exciting things. One is I did a podcast interview with Sportsish, which if you guys like my channel and you're not familiar with this, I think you guys will love it. The kind of sub headline for Sportsish is not your boyfriend sports news. So of course it's about, you know, sports and scores and all of the sports news that's going on. And then uh, Lily, who's the founder also ties in like fashion and lifestyle and 
kind of everything that I like to do with tennis, but she does it for a bunch of different sports. So I did a podcast interview with her. We talk about, of course, tennis and life on tour. I also talked a little bit more about my experience at Super Bowl um, because that's something that she talks a lot about is just trying to make sports more inclusive for women and for female fans. So that episode is already live if you guys want to go listen to it. Sportsish is one of the few like companies or entities that I've seen and I'm like, damn, I wish I would have started that first. It's so genius. The branding is so cute. And I think she will just continue to grow and grow. Um, yeah, she does a really great job with it. The other exciting thing that I did this week is I announced my new partnership with Wilson, which has been in the works for a little bit, but basically I have a sponsorship with them for all of 2024. I hope I'm not wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure they told my team that I'm the first person that they've signed that's not a professional athlete, which is pretty cool because they're such a huge sports brand and specifically in the tennis world, they're just such like an OG, like massive, massive tennis brand. And I've kind of been holding off for a long time doing a like tennis specific partnership like this because I wanted to make sure it was really with the right company that I really loved and really respected. So many brands do tennis stuff and have tennis lines and whatever now, but I I really wanted to work with one that I thought was incredible and I really, I think Wilson's incredible. I remember at Wimbledon this year when I was looking at all the different kits of all the WTA players, I thought Wilson had the cutest one. They had like these adorable white dresses that are so figure flattering. I don't know. I feel like a lot of the brands that sponsor female players on tour i don't love a lot of times i don't love the kits i think that like tennis core can be so cute and some brands just do not do it right and i don't know who's running the women's clothing department at wilson but they're absolutely killing it their stuff is adorable a lot of brands have really cute tennis stuff but and i've showed this on my my tiktok series i've been doing for like two years of like taylor giving me tennis lessons a lot of times when I wear sports bras from other brands, like if you reach up, like my titty literally pops out. So this is all from their new collection. I'll be working with them for pretty much all of their new drops this year for, for women's tennis clothing, but it's really cute. And I like a lot of this stuff. I can obviously wear playing, but I can also just wear as athleisure, like a day shopping or whatever. But I have some really exciting stuff with them planned for this year for a number of tournaments and then i'll also be partnering with them for all of the grand slams on some fun stuff and we have a really big exciting thing for indian wells this year which i am pumped about because we're getting close we're getting close to indian wells it's such a good tournament taylor won indian wells two years ago it is a lot of players absolute favorite tournaments it's so beautiful it's so uh, bougie I don't know if I should say that I don't know that's really the only word I can really think of to like describe Indian Wells but it's in the desert it's absolutely beautiful and it's a very important tournament for us because Taylor won that as an American he was the first American to win it in so long um, first American to win a Masters at all in so long that tournament's always been really special to us and it's kind of his home tournament because he's from California um, but then we have these leggings with like this really cute kind of classic fonts. Yeah, I'm really, really proud of this partnership and I'm really excited for the stuff that we're going to do this year. Everything that I've been doing in the tennis world and trying to bring tennis to a younger audience, trying to introduce this really strong intersection between sports and fashion and tennis and fashion is really starting to come to fruition. And I feel like especially the last couple months on social media, um, sports are really they're really for the girls I and mean, they've always been for the girls but i feel like even more so now media and brands and content creators are really starting to to dive into that which is like literally everything that i've been working towards the last two years so it's really exciting to see all of it come to life in the next couple of months are going to be big for me in and out of tennis i have some really exciting stuff coming up that I think you guys will love and just feels very um, authentic and exciting to me and I'm really passionate about all of it. So thank you guys for your continued support. <laughs> Decided to make some fits and everything's just going so well right now. So I took a little break from my lessons while I was in Vegas, obviously, because my brain cells were non-existent while I was there, but I have restarted my 
my science of happiness course this week and then i've also been grinding on the spanish so i'm learning spanish in like kind of three different pillars right now uh kind of four different pillars but next week i'm going to mexico and i'm really really gonna try to practice it while i'm there but i'm doing one course on coursera so both the science of happiness course and my spanish course are on the same platform so i can share that down below and then i'm also doing duolingo which i think duolingo is great in a lot of ways but i don't think just from like even the last like two weeks of kind of doing this learning i don't think it's gonna be the biggest thing that's really gonna help me learn the language besides just basic words the app that has really really helped me and i found this on tiktok and it's absolutely amazing is called language transfer it's kind of like a audiobook i would say but you listen to someone else's spanish lesson and just the way that they do it he doesn't let you write anything down they have a very kind of specific guideline for how to how to do it it's a completely free app and i feel like i've learned so much more through this app than any of the other things that i'm doing they have so many languages they have spanish turkish german greek italian and it's completely free so highly highly recommend using this even just to supplement other learning that you're doing it's been incredible and then there's another app called speak and translate that i think i pay like 50 dollars a year for and i've had this for forever because when we're traveling to places and let's say for example i get in a taxi and the taxi driver doesn't speak any english this you can speak right into and then it will translate it <laughs> into whatever language you need and i find this to be easier to use and a little bit better than google translate like i can just say i'm going to a tennis match today whenever i'm stuck on a sentence or i want to figure out how to say a phrase or a word then i just use this while i'm doing my lesson and it's very helpful so i'm gonna do my spanish lesson now before i get ready and head down to delray for the match okay i am just about to leave to head up to delray from miami wearing this little denim jumpsuit in honor of beyonce switching to country this is from rami brooke though it's very cute and very comfortable also taylor won this tournament last year so he is defending his title and that basically means you're defending the title he wants. <laughs> I feel like sometimes players have a little bit more pressure on them for tournaments if they are defending their title. These courts are, from what I've heard from the players, a little bit more difficult to play on because the balls are a little weird and sometimes it can get really windy at night because we're here in Florida. So it's kind of one of those tournaments where you just have to absolutely grind it out, which is what Taylor did last year and he's kind of been doing again this year, but hopefully he will win tonight to pack an overnight bag because if he does win tonight then tomorrow will be a day match so it'd just be kind of a lot to end a late match tonight and then drive all the way back down to miami and then drive right back in the morning so i think if he wins tonight then we probably will stay at a hotel in delray just to make it easier on the day for tomorrow and if he doesn't win tonight then we will just drive right back to miami and then i don't know what i'll do tomorrow the world the world would be my oyster yeah Final got canceled for today, so we are heading back to Miami for the night, mm -hmm. and then you'll drive down at what six tomorrow? Like seven. Seven. Yeah, so we're going to sleep early tonight. We're going to Chipotle to get lunch. Oh, yep. Yeah. There's the celebrity card. Taylor's greatest <laughs> <laughs> prize. Enjoy. I have meals with them for my my deal. Fifty-two free meals. I mean, that's the same thing as having like a card, basically. Yeah, basically. If I had Chipotle every day for, wait, no. <laughs> yeah, every day. For no, the whole year. What? not every. Day. How many days in a year are there? Oh, three. <laughs> <laughs> once a week. Sorry, once a week. Once a week. I am really not a huge reality TV person. Like Love Is Blind is the only one that I've watched really in the past besides Survivor. But this season, I wanted to watch The Bachelor just for like the tennis lore or whatever. If you're not watching The Bachelor right now, the actual bachelor is like a tennis pro um i think he used to teach tennis lessons in hawaii but a lot of their marketing to 
promote the show leading up to it was tennis related so I kept seeing it I kept getting tagged and stuff from it and I was like all right you know what I'm gonna give it a shot and oh my god I don't really care for Joey much to be honest the bachelor because he doesn't blink or break eye contact and that kind of freaks me out a little. I don't know what it's been like in past seasons with the girls, but the drama, the insane thing on the show, and I feel like what everyone is talking about right now is there is one girl on the show named Maria. She's like the internet's sweetheart right now. And she is so effortlessly cool, has so much personality, is so funny, is stunning, beautiful, sick body. Basically to sum it up, if you're not watching this season, so there's Maria, everyone loves Maria, Maria's great. And then there's these other girls who are just picking on her and bullying her and projecting on her and making her, trying to make her the villain so bad. Obviously it's reality TV. I'm sure we don't see all sides of it, but to me, I'm just learning, uh, not learning, like this is something we knew, but girls who do not have a sense of self and who are insecure will just villainize and project and pick on someone who has such a strong sense of self who is clearly confident who is funny and interesting and the jealousy is so so transparent that the entire internet is on maria's side and i i kind of feel for these girls because watching it back they've got to just be like damn like how did i blow such an incredible opportunity because this girl intimidated me it was honestly really pissing me off in the last episode that I was watching because she was just, she was not doing anything, but these girls were so intimidated by her that they, they were just mean to her. Now I will say one of the girls who was being a big old bully on the show and is already off the show because of the way that she acted and on Instagram or TikTok and was talking about the bullying that she was receiving online now because of the show. And I get it, I'm an influencer, like I've gotten online hate before but it's not anyone else's responsibilities if your own actions make you look bad. She is still continuing to play the victim even though there's so much evidence of her just acting out in really bizarre ways. And I'm like, girl, you gotta just, you gotta just own up to it. And I will say as much as I like Maria, I really don't want her to end up with Joey because I think he has the personality of a wet hot dog and maybe he's just acting a certain way to come off as a nice guy for the show but i'm like you are so boring final pop culture thing that i've been deeply invested in this week is this article from the cut and i think if you're on twitter you've definitely seen this basically there's this financial writer who wrote this um personal essay about how she got scammed out of fifty thousand dollars and scams my mom sends me tiktoks about scams 50 times a day. I don't know what is up with this woman and scams, but I've seen a lot of content about how easily people can get scammed. I get it. But this story is wild. Like you cannot even imagine how you could be in that situation and actually go through with what this woman went through. Entirely her own doing, by the way. Like when you read it back, I know hindsight's 2020, but I'm like, <laughs> this one I was reading it. I was like, there's no way there's no way anyone could fall for this But maybe I don't know Maybe it's important for you guys to read or send your parents so they don't get scammed because People are doing some crazy stuff Nowadays, but all the commentary around this article has been the most Entertaining part of it for me. I'm really into these long-form articles and essays right now from like the cut Atlantic there's some on New York Times. One of my all-time favorite ones that I found in college is called The Lonely Death of George Bell. And it's basically about how people in New York don't know their neighbors. Um, I don't wanna give more information than that, but I will also link that down below. But if you guys have any long-form essays similar to that that you recommend, like please let me know because I'm obsessed with them and I wanna read all of them. I have a really cute outfit plan for today, but it's cold. It's like 60 degrees outside. Well, cold for Miami. So, I don't know, I'm gonna have to switch up the fit. It's really cloudy today too. Here is my match fit. The sweater is from Frame, and then I have this little stod. I think this is technically a beach bag, but I have to bring my laptop down so I can edit. <laughs> Celebrate. I'm gonna go play League of Legends and 
teenagers are probably going to tell me to delete the game and come Nice. <laughs> Super excited about it. Yeah.